Next one is intelligent automation. Intelligent automation started with extended ECM. When you look at extended ECM, it is actually an automation uh, product. So you have a business object in SAP, let's say a purchase order, and automatically we create the content structures for that. We know what type it is, we pick the right workspace template, we create the workspace, and then we synchronize everything between the leading application and the content application. If that is data, roles, access permissions, classification, structure, relationships, everything. SAP is a leading system and the workspace is fully synchronized. And when we bring that back with a smart view, you close the loop and from the end user perspective, maybe a purchase officer working in SAP, he creates a purchase order and immediately the workspace is there. He doesn't even see the magic behind the scenes. So this is really unprecedented depths of integration and automation. And we want to lift that to the next level. So intelligent automation for us means to bring together awareness what is happening in the leading system, such as that we know what is happening in Salesforce and SAP, but also that we know what is happening in content applications and in the Office 365 world. This gives us a full insight of things that are happening in the leading system. And we combine that with information, the information we get from the leading systems or the information that we drive with intelligent automation and uh, uh, co cognitive services that we make use of this information and derive meaning from that information. And if we combine the two things, we can really do really clever things. Intelligent automation, like personalization, showing everybody the right things, content automation, or governance and compliance automation. Another perfect example of intelligent automation is Capture. And Capture has co come a long way. So it started to be something like scanning and OCR. But these days, Capture is, 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 is different. Capture is universal. Capture is everywhere. We distribute it. That means we bring Capture to all the users. It uses machine learning and advanced recognition. It is deeply integrated into enterprise processes, like extended ECM, a capture for SAP, a capture for Salesforce. And we did deliver also deployment option for capture in the cloud. So looking at the portfolio, for those of you that, that have already some of our capture solutions, and we have some of them, they are all very powerful, but it was a bit confusing um, that we had multiple capture solutions. So what we did is we streamlined our offering and, and worked hard to bring together the best out of the different capture offerings we had. For off-cloud and private cloud, the new offering will be called Open Text Intelligent Capture. And there will be dedicated session on that. That brings together Captiva and the Open Text Capture Center. For the public cloud, we took what um, the ECD company already had with Open Text Snap, that was a cloud capture app and cloud capture services from Captiva and introduced an all new open text core capture solution. That is one of these core branded OT2 applications. And for SAP, we had dedicated capture solutions before and now we consolidated that also on the same technology stack that all the technology advances we do around machine learning are benefiting all the different um, options we have. So intelligent capture for on-premise, core capture for the, for the cloud, and the variants for SAP that are using the same technology. This brings us to the next demo. And I'm happy to welcome Darren on stage. Darren is one of my product managers. He owns everything capture. And uh, Darren, what are you going to show us today? Thanks, Mark. So uh, today I'm going to show how a knowledge worker can use uh, core capture to scan documents into core collaboration. So here's my core collaboration uh, screen. I've got nothing in it. And I, I've got a couple of, uh, of documents that have come to my desk and now I want to get those into the system. So I switch over to core capture. Uh, what you're looking at here, the, the tiles on the screen uh, represent capture flows. So there are little mini workflows uh, that can be configured for specific types of documents. Some people like to arrange these by department or sometimes by, um, by type of document. And it specifies whether there's going to be image enhancement done, classification, extraction, and what the export is. I've got some vendor invoices, so let me go ahead and start with that. From this screen, I would, uh, I'd, uh, if I had a scanner, maybe next time you will approve the expense report for a mobile <laughs> scanner, but uh, uh, since I don't have let's one. Let's see how you do today. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and, and uh, take uh, some, uh, 
scans I have on my hard drive. And as you can see, the system is immediately processing the pages. As soon as the first page comes in, it starts going down the capture workflow. Um, in this case, we're doing image enhancement. We're doing classification. Uh, that'll be used for document separation. Uh, we're also doing extraction. And it found two documents, four pages in total. Let's go ahead and click on to the, uh, the organize step. This next screen is uh, where you can do document assembly. You can, if pages are out of order, you can move the page order. You can split to a new document. Uh, you can also edit the document if you need to change brightness or contrast or rescan. Um, in this case, everything looks good. At the top of the screen, you'll see a little uh, icon trail that shows the workflow step I'm on. I've done scan and import. I'm currently on organize. I've got two steps left to go. I'm just going to go ahead and click next and move on to the next step. It says it detected five issues, um, and so it'll kick me into the review step. If there were no issues, it, it would take me immediately into submission. I'll go ahead and click fixed issues. Um, what you can see here is that it, it missed a, uh, recognition on a couple of fields. That's because I configured it so I could stop and show you the, the, uh, the interface. Um, if, I, if I click down on the fields on the right, you'll notice on the left on the image, it'll uh, show you the actual um, uh, zone which the, the data comes from. We have different types of form elements, list boxes, drop downs, uh, and we have a special pop out element for line items because line items can get uh, long and, and take up quite a bit of screen real estate. There's even a capability for you to pop this out into a separate browser tab and you could put that in a, in a separate uh, 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 monitor. I like having two monitors and that lets me uh, uh, do things very efficiently. All right, uh, the other thing I can show you here is you can also set up rules to look for various types of data, whether it's protected health information, other uh, private information, or in this case, uh, uh, possible uh, import or export tariff issues. So I've uh, identified here with a rule that uh, this guardian angel is a possible import tariff. And I want to make sure that's handled on the back end through a special workflow. So I set a flag here, import tariff alert. That's about it for this invoice. Let me go ahead and finish completing it. Uh, you'll see we're missing the invoice number. As I move the cursor over the image, it tells me I'm looking for the invoice number. And if I move up, it'll show me the, the data on the form underneath the, on the image that it OCR'd. And it'll also tell me if that data would give me an error. So I don't want to pick the date. I want the invoice number and the date is right here and everything else is good and I move on to the next document. Uh, here are the invoice number. Again, I'll pick that one up. And before I move down to the, uh, the bill to date, let me know, uh, point out something really interesting on this invoice. This is a live invoice. It's had the, the personal data scrubbed. It actually doesn't have an invoice date anywhere on it. And I, for those of you who have ever worked in accounts payable, not having an invoice date on the invoice is a problem. You always need to have one in your AP system of record. There's lots of rules that companies will set up. In this case, I've set a rule up in Core Capture. Say, hey, is there a ship date? And yes, there is a ship date. It's right down here. Well, if there's a ship date, let's go ahead and set the invoice date to the ship date. So in that case, um, uh, I just need to uh, rubber band the bill to and move to the next error. Now the next error is the salesperson. This salesperson is Corp Sales Incorporated. It's not one of my approved purchasing agents. That's going to cause a problem. So I've got an other in here and I can use that field again on the back end to trigger a workflow so it's handled appropriately. Everything looks good here. I'm going to go ahead and click next. It tells us we've got two documents, four pages. They're all classified. There's no remaining data issues. I can go ahead and submit. And this is then going to kick it over into core collaboration. So that means core capture and core collaboration work nicely together. The document is finally stored in, in the repository That's with right. all the data. That's right. And yeah. the way machine learning is going to play into this mm -hmm is that um, every, all the actions that I took as an operator get fed into the machine learning engine. So the fields that weren't recognized that I identified, those will be identified next time by the engine. 
Um, and even the fields which I didn't do anything on, they have an importance too because they confirm that our recognition is correct. So the machine learning is constantly uh, evaluating and improving its recognition. Great. Super example for intelligent automation. Thanks a lot, yep. Darren. That was a great demo. Thank you. Thank you. Back to Fred. Thank you.